Everything is coming to a time where prophecy and man's inability to live on earth in a spiritual way will come to a crossroad of great problems. It's the Hopi belief, it's our belief that if you're not spiritually connected to the earth and understand the spiritual reality of how to live on earth, it's likely you will not make it. When Columbus came, that began what we term as the First World War. That was the true First World War when Columbus arrived. Because along with him came everybody from Europe. By the end of the Second World War, we were, in America, we were only 800,000 from 60 million to 800,000. So we were almost exterminated here in America. Everything is spiritual. Everything has a spirit. Everything... Everything was brought to you by the Creator, the one Creator. Some people call him God. Some people call him Buddha. Some people call him Allah. Some people call him other names. We call him Tonkashila, grandfather. We're here on Earth only a few winters. Then we go to the spirit world. The spirit world is, is more real than most of us believe. The spirit world is, is everything. Over 95% of our body is water. And in order to stay healthy, you've got to drink good water. When the European first came here, Columbus, we could drink out of any river. If the Europeans had lived the Indian way when they came, we'd still be drinking out of water because the water is sacred. The air is sacred. Our DNA is made of the same DNA as the tree. The tree breathes what we exhale. When the tree exhales, we need what the tree exhales. So we have a common destiny with the tree. We are all from the earth. And when the earth, the water, the atmosphere is corrupted, then it will create its own reaction. Mother is reacting. In the Hopi prophecy, they say the storms and floods will become greater. To me, it's not a negative thing to know that there will be great changes. It's not negative. It's evolution. When you look at it as evolution, it's time. Nothing stays the same. So, if we're going to reconnect with the cosmos, if we say, I want to be who I really am and connect with all that exists, then that intent will draw to us the experiences necessary to achieve that. All the time, every time. And I'm waiting for it. And what we need to do to achieve that connection is to clear out that cesspit level of low vibrational emotion. All those things within us which we've um, 
gone into denial about. Like, I've just changed the subject, mate. Don't want to talk about it. And so we draw into our lives people, experiences, what have you, that make sure that we can no longer do that. That this has to come out and be processed and we have to clean out all this emotional debris that's disconnecting us from who we really are. And, and so if we're prepared to walk this journey, if we don't at that stage when the challenges come go, oh no, like spirituality but not that badly, thank you very much. If we're prepared to take those challenges, to take a step back and realize that it's actually an experience that is going to set us free rather than a really negative bad thing that is something to do with the fact that we're not good people. There must have been something terrible in a previous life. I hear that all the time. These connections or these challenges are to help set us free by cleaning this out. It's important we understand that. And I find that there are so many people in what's called the new age or into the psychic stuff and all the rest of it who um, are still operating on a fraction of who they are because they're not prepared to do what is necessary and take the challenges to face what's within us. And we all have this stuff within us to remove and process. And when you do, that's when you can start talking about freedom. And it's coming back as we come to a close here to the same thing again and again, the way to freedom. And that is to step out of the fear what other people think of us and just do it, just do it, just do it. People say to me um, sometimes, um, um, how do I get over the fear of what people think? How do I get over the fear of what people think of me? What I would suggest is let the fear be the trigger to overcome it. So if you're in a situation where you're thinking, oh, well, I'd love to say this, but what will they think? Just say it. Just say it. If the people around you cannot um, respect your right to be you, then what are you worried about? What they think of you for? And if you're in a situation where I'd love to do this, this is what I like to do, but what will they think? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. And when you get into that just do it mode, just do it mode, just do it mode, some very interesting things start to happen. First of all, you're following your intuition, your heart, your connection with out there, and you're letting that be your guide. Just do it, do it intuitively. And after a while, and I've seen this in my own life, although the head is screaming, oh my God, what are you doing? Eventually, you start to realize that when you follow your intuition, although it might set up great challenges to start with, and you think, oh my goodness, what have I done? Eventually, you see that everything was exactly what was necessary to bring about a positive outcome.
And after a while of doing this, of just doing it, just doing it, just doing it, your mind, your head starts to look at this and it realizes that every time you follow your intuition, although it's a challenge, eventually everything works out tremendously well. And what happens then is the head and the heart come into sync. And what you think and what you feel become the same thing. And that's when we start to connect with who we really are and the true nature of our power to manifest our own destiny. Just do it. For me, what we call soul, the highest expression of ourselves, is pure love. I don't care who you are, what your background is, what you've done, I don't care if you're Henry Kissinger or George Bush or David Rockefeller or the Queen of England or any of these guys that have been manipulating the world and still are, at that level of yourself, you're pure love. Everyone is. But we can become disconnected from that level and manifest in that disconnection anything but pure love. But that's what we all are, all of us. And when we get disconnected, that's when the problems start and the imbalances start and the imbalanced behavior starts. When we're born into a physical body, if we maintain that connection with pure love, soul, then we have everything we need for a balanced life. We have the eyes and ears information coming in, telling us and giving us a fix about the world around us. And we have the connection with soul, the big picture, the intuition, mission control, which is guiding us from another perspective. We have both. Symbolically, it's like a spaceman on the moon, where um, you're in that big spacesuit, symbolic of the body. And you've got the eyes and ears information giving you a fix on what's happening on the moon around you. But you've also got mission control, the big picture, giving you the big picture guidance. This is what comes next, then do that, and this is what's next on the agenda. Symbolic of intuition. Imagine what would happen if someone came along and cut or dramatically reduced that spaceman's connection to mission control. Suddenly, this is the only information and the vague memory of what should have been happening at this time. They're the only fix we have on who we are and where we are. And that spaceman's um, behavior would dramatically change within seconds and minutes compared with what it would have been had mission control stayed in big picture contact. And that symbolically is what happens to us when we come into this world. When we're born, the conditioning starts. The programming starts to disconnect us from mission control, the big picture, soul. So the eggshells start. We start to be conditioned to see ourselves as either just a physical body or subjected to, to some uh, god and, and what have you. The programming gets started from the moment we become conscious. A friend of mine once said um, something very true. If you're born to loving parents and they tell you that two and two equals five, and then you go on to nice teachers and they tell you two and two equals five, and then you go on to university and professors with letters after their name tell you two and two equals five, all your peers around you are telling you the same because they've been through the same system. The media is telling you constantly two and two equals five. It's no surprise that the vast majority of people go through their lives believing two and two equals five. The conditioning. The conditioning of belief which disconnects us from who we really are. And if we can just break that eggshell and we can express the true nature of who we are and not live someone else's version of what we should be, when the eggshell cracks, we reconnect with mission control. And at that point, we taste freedom. And that is the challenge now that we all have and the opportunity we all have. Chinese have a word that means both uh, danger and opportunity. We're at the point now of that choice.
because that's what life is. It's a choice and learning from the consequences of the choice and making different choices and learning from the consequences of them. That's what evolution is. And we're at a point now where we can make incredible leaps as this 26,000 year cycle comes to an end. The next 15 years are going to transform life on Earth. They're going to transform the nature of our perception. They're maybe going to transform some of the physical Earth also. One thing's for sure, it's going to be one heck of a challenge. But no matter how challenging it gets, one thing remains constant. We live forever. We are everything, and everything is us. Whatever we're experiencing in this moment, it's just an experience. We live forever. And if we can hold that focus of who we are, we get out of ordinary little man and woman in the street, I've got no power, to I am everything ex that exists and I can manifest and create whatever I want. We are genius. We've forgotten we're genius. And that's why a few people run the world. I'm going to end with some words by uh, a singer in America who wrote new words to the American National Anthem. To get away from the nationalism, he called it the Earth Anthem. And the world that he describes here is the world that is just a thought away, just an open heart away, just a change of perception away. We can think hate, we can think love. We can create a world dominated by hate and fear, or we can create a world dominated by love and compassion. It's just a choice, and we all have the opportunity to do that. So I'll leave you with these words, with the emphasis that this is the world we can and will create. When we heal ourselves, we heal the world. When we change ourselves, we change the world. When we love ourselves, we love the world. And when we love the world, it manifests in a very different form to the one I've been talking about these hours over these thousands of years of manipulation. Freedom is upon us. Time to grasp it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time. You should treat all things as spirit. Realize that we are one family. It's never something like the end. Just like life, there is no end to life. 